Hey, what's up YouTube? Today is the Ranger part of this series for the top gauntlet rips. Ranger was a class that I expected would do pretty well in the gauntlet purely because it was actually one of the few classes that actually completed every single boss. And it was Sestarix who did Raider, Archmage, BFBB. But it turns out that Raider was a pretty bad class this go around and it didn't really perform as well as expected. And I think partly, part of that was due to the harvest nerfs in that you couldn't just put in a map and know if the harvest was there or not. So it made it a lot harder to craft some of the gear that the Raider Archmage BFBB uses. Because Archmage BFBB cannot be played from the onset and you need to craft the gear and you need to have pretty good gear before you reach this like critical mass where you're like unkillable. But I was not able to stream today, so I didn't really upgrade the Fire Burst character anymore. But I'm going to go over all of the Raider rips, and then I'm going to talk about predictions for what will get nerfed in 3.15. Since I think a lot of times when GGG nerfs skills, it comes down to public sentiment and what people perceive as overpowered. And perception is pretty crazy, right? And perception probably alters what they nerf more than actual st statistics. So... There was actually a post on Reddit that I will go through that people will list what they actually think will get nerfed in 3.15. And I think most of the stuff that gets repeated a lot will actually get nerfed. So that's why I'm kind of sad about doing the Fire Burst character. Because I had no idea that Fire Burst is literally the second coming of the best skill in the game. And a lot of people believe that it's just plain out broken. But let's get straight into the Raider Rips before we talk about the 3.15 potential nerfs to uh, builds. The Raider class is pretty good. I mean, the top guy got pretty far. 119 points. Grats inward heal for winning. And I think he died to Uber Aziri. Gauntlet suicide. And then he says, definitely on purpose. So, Uber Aziri is a pretty scary fight. Damn, he just evaporated. I mean, I don't think he expected it to come out that fast, but... Standing there and not flame dashing immediately was pretty. I mean, that's a pretty fast rip, but grats on him for finishing all the content. So it seems like Raider got pretty far. This was actually a build that was not played last league. No one was playing Herald of Agony. But Raider is a build with a lot of effective HP due to his dodge and evasion mechanics. So very good build. And this one is Lily, who I think leveled up all the way and... I think she ran out of, ran out of time, so she was forced to do Uber Aziri because she didn't have the other sets. And she swapped over from Archmage BFBB to Stormbrand, which is a fine build. So she kills one of the Uber Aziris, and then another one spawns, and then this she gets like, kind of close to it, and then just does that. And that's just a death sentence, right, with that many hits. But... Yeah, because she literally pretty much got shotgunned by all of the ball lightnings that came out. But it was a pretty impressive run, so it's just another bossing rip. So most of the ones at the top will always be bossing rips because they're over 95. But this one is another Herald of Agony player. So this is a pretty cool build, Herald of Agony with the Raider defense. The main problem with this build is the physical mitigation is kind of bad. And this ability right here does a lot of physical damage. And it also gets scaled with the gauntlet mods. So here, this is kind of like how Garata died. So the mob is like down far left. And it's channeling this ability that just instantly one-shots you. It's actually kind of crazy because he had Fortify up and it just... Did he have Fortify up? Oh, he, I don't think he, he might not have had it up. Oh, he had it up. And he still died. No flasks up, but it's not like it would have mitigated the fizz damage, right? That's actually pretty crazy that that does so much damage because this map has no damage mods and it's a zero modded map. But that's just what happens when you have no armor, I guess. Or any physical mitigation at all. So, Jung Rowan's death. This is a... With like the 50 it's a it Pathfinder. Oh, it's a Caustic Arrow. Is it Pathfinder? I don't remember. It's a Ultimatum Death. 7k HP. No Fortify. Yeah, effective HP is pretty low, so... 
Sometimes you just get unlucky and you don't dodge stuff and then you just get instantly killed. But this is doing archers which is extremely dangerous I think. Archers scale really crazily with the gauntlet mods so... That was quite unfortunate. And then we have a blade fall blade blast person. This guy was using a tabula. So this is Archmage BFBB. This is Delirium, so that's pretty sketchy. So this person is actually pretty tanky, 5.4k HP. What even hits him? Oh, it's Drox. Yeah, Drox, yeah, physical damage is gonna be the bane of this build. Because there's no physical mitigation and... But this is still an enormous hit, right? So his mana didn't even go all the way down. Man, that's, it's pretty unfortunate, but it happens. So this is pretty much like a class that dies to like flat fizz damage a lot. Especially big fizz hits. So this guy actually had a tabula at 93. So some people say the best offense is defense, right? So uh, this build actually takes a while to gear up, right? So ideally, I don't know if Lily had it, but you want a shaper chest with 10% mom right here and it makes you a lot tankier. And having the crown of the inward eye is almost mandatory in my opinion for having the damage to do the bosses. So it's another build kind of like the berserker where you actually have to gear it up a long time. And a lot of people just don't survive the gearing phase. The slow push atlas right try not to die this is another bfbb bill and what is this to oh i think it's oh it's just explosions on the ground don't really know what type of damage that is if it's fizz or chaos or something like that or fire even but it seems like delirium is pretty dangerous i don't know if you can actually dodge those explosions with spell dodge but kind of unfortunate like this is like probably a stage of the character where it's pretty relatively weak I'm assuming. So this person, yeah, he doesn't have like the main stuff ready for the guild build to really pop off. So did I watch this one? Yeah, so this one's playing an unknown build, but since he has a VOD, we will know it. Wait, this is not the right video unless he's super low level. So I think this person accidentally put the wrong rip clip up. This person's playing another Bladefall Blade Blast build. So this person doesn't have the chest. So you can see most of these people are pretty like low level. Like you're not gonna be like crafting like super crazy gear until you get super high. And like that's when the build actually starts feeling invulnerable. So Archmage BFBB. No, Baran is usually pretty dangerous. Uh, maybe this is an ailment immune death because he has no flasks up right now, right? Oh, he actually dodged so many of those. What the fuck? The spell dodge is OP until you don't dodge it. What's he gonna die? Is he just gonna get kicked by an auto attack and die? Yeah. An uh, auto attack just killed him. But what do you mean? Did he even... Oh, I guess there's like little circles on the ground too. I think he stood still one second to cast the uh, Blade Fall Blade Blast and it got him. Wait, did he actually get shocked there or I didn't really see. Oh, Raider has shock immunity so it doesn't even matter. He can't even get shocked. So that's about all of the Raider deaths. So it seems like Raider is a class that performs very well at the high end if you can get there. But it seems like the Blade Fall Blade Blast build never really got up and running for a lot of people. So this person kind of had the gear. So you pretty much need the chest and you need the helm from Shape uh, Awakener. But I mean this person's gear was not too bad. The weapons are not the best, but what level was this person? 95. So this time around without the harvest exploit, it was a lot harder to gear. So yeah, you pretty much need the shaper chest and then you need the crown of the inward eye and you need to have pretty good mana regen gear. Because Raider does not get that much base mana regen compared to Hierophant or something. But it seems like there's a lot of different uh, playstyles. The main three were Herald of Agony, Bladefall, Blade Blast, Archmage, and Toxic Rain. And I think that's about it.
But that's going to be it for the Raider section. Grats to Inward Heal for winning. And it's actually a shame that not more people completed it with Playfall Play Blast. But this class's weakness is definitely physical damage, super big hits, and just getting unlucky with dodges, I guess. But yeah, so let's move on to the 3.15 potential nerfs. So this thread is pretty big. Now someone mentioned how I downvoted the post last time on accident, so I made sure to upvote it this time. But it's supposed to got pretty big traction. Nerf predictions for 3.15. So in the beginning, there's always a dichotomy that exists between Hardcore and Softcore. And then there's even Hardcore SSF versus hard, regular Hardcore trade. So like the main thing is every person in Hardcore will say that what should get nerfed is Fortify effect stacking and slams. But then there's people who say that slam builds are just not that great in the end game because you can't really scale it that well. And the only way to really scale it is through crit. But then if you go crit, you lose a lot of his tankiness. And then there's also the softcore perspective where slams are just not that great at all. And no one ever plays slams in hardcore. So there are a few things that I think might get nerfed. And the first and foremost is Arcane Cloak Archmage. And I think they might nerf Agnostic. But the problem with nerfing stuff like this just because it's popular means that Diversity will just not exist because if you nerf Agnostic and Arcane Cloak and Archmage It means that a lot of build archetypes are just completely dead And when you don't re replace the build archetype with something as a viable alternative So you don't add another skill into the game It feels really bad and it actually kills the build diversity in the game So I hope they don't actually nerf Archmage BFBB But you never know So another one that pops up a lot is Fire Burst and it's actually kind of sad because I was making my Fire Burst character. So this skill here, I think a lot of people complain that it is too powerful for the investment because you don't need a 6 link. And some people also say GGG does not like atom automation in their skills and it's pretty true. Because Fire Burst supposedly has a very sick playstyle like you just put down a Storm Brand, applies EE or something and you just, if you don't run Anger that is. And there's a lot of different ways to build it too. So I actually really like the build archetype because I was researching how to build the Fire Burst character. And you can use a staff, you can use, uh, what's it called? You can use a bow, and then there's also the ring choices. Some people use Replica, Ember Wake, and Ember Wake. So it's a pretty cool build idea because there's so many ways to build it. And there's not really like a solved build at all. And there's so many different variations on it. So I don't really think it should get nerfed that much, but hopefully they might do a little bit of tuning maybe to the numbers. I don't really know what they're going to do. They could increase the cooldown again, but this right here is like pretty accurate for what I think they will nerf. Blade Blast, everyone knows that at the beginning of the league, Bladefall Blade Blast was super, super strong. Now I don't really know if they'll actually double nerf a skill just to nerf it because it's popular, but Bladefall Blade Blast with an Assassin is undoubtedly probably one of the best league starters if they don't touch it. So they might touch it with a slight like 10% damage nerf if I had to guess, but I'm not really sure. Now Elementalist here, people say Elementalist, so people, a lot of people consider like that GGG nerfs it by looking through the ascendancies and what is actually super popular. So if you see that like, Elementalist, most of the people playing Elementalist is playing Vault Burning Arrow. They're playing Flame Wall, some people are playing Fire Burst, and some people are playing Summon Carrying Golem. There's a lot of different builds for it, but I don't really know what they would actually touch on Elementalist. Maybe some slight numerical lowering. So that's what they like to do a lot, is they like to like tinker with the new numbers behind the skill. And then when they want to actually nerf the skill completely off the face of the earth, they will actually like do mechanical changes, like three mechanic changes and nerfs to the numbers. So it just becomes like, so bad that the skill is just unplayable. I do think they'll nerf Fortify effect because Fortify is probably too strong and it makes the difference in hardcore too great. So it's like if you don't have Fortify, but I don't really know what they'll actually replace it with. But it's so like that's the thing. Like if you just nerf stuff and you don't offer alternatives, then it's not really going to solve anything and everything is just going to be bad. So Raider, I do not think they'll actually touch. But let's see. But Fire Burst does definitely seem like a very, very, very big 
topic of contention that people always mention. So another one that I looked at was Hateforge. Hateforge will probably definitely get changed, I think, in some regard, but I don't really know if they need to nerf it. If they just make it a super chase unique, because if the Trial Master barely spawns, and that is if they add Ultimatum to be core in the league, they might just not add it. But I feel like they will add it because Ultimatum League was pretty unintrusive. Like you don't have any fragments to add to your tabs. And you pretty much just have inscribed ultimatums. The problem with inscribed ultimatums is if the mirror inscribed ultimatums is around, that means that mirrors will become forever lower in value than before. With Vol Ground Slam, I could see them nerfing it because people were using it to stun bosses completely out of their mechanics. And GGG probably does not like that. Or they can just add like immune to stun to the bosses. Self chill is something that they might touch on. It was really really popular at the league start but it kind of fell off in popularity. Like builds always have like an ebb and flow throughout the league. Some YouTuber makes a really popular video about it. It gets really popular. Then people kind of forget about it so it's not really that well represented at the end. So it remains to be seen. Self chill I think is really really broken and I've touched upon this a lot. So I don't know. Maybe they'll they'll probably just nerf the mechanic completely because supposedly there's like some bug with how it counts as you being shocked so you're also chilled. But not really sure. All these other things I don't really think will get touched that much. Hopefully they don't nerf Archmage and Agnostic. I really like that concept. Burning Arrow, I could see like a slight numerical change. All of these things, if they get nerfed, will probably just be like a slight 10% nerf. But in the end, what comes down to be the most important is them buffing things and adding new skills into the game or reworking old skills that aren't used mechanically so that it's actually different. Because some skills that aren't used will just never be used because it's just bad. Like no one is going to use Shock Nova which has, which has a dead zone or something like that. Even if you buff the damage by 30% or 40%, you need to give it some like reason to be used over like Blade Fall, Blade Blast, or Toxic Rain. But maybe having perfect balance in an ARPG is just not a thing, right? So overall, this thread was pretty good overall, I think, in listing out what might be changed and what I believe will be changed. Or what I touched on, I think will just be like slight numerical changes and hopefully they don't actually completely gut mechanically some of these skills. I actually really like Archmage builds with Agnostic. Actually a pretty cool archetype and I hope they don't actually completely destroy it. I'm actually surprised they left Agnostic how it was in for another patch, but you never know. I think Hateforge is such a limited item that it doesn't really even matter that much. Like, not that many people even uses, used it, right? So let's see, how many people actually had the Hateforge gloves on PoE Ninja? I mean, they are so prohibitively rare. at yeah, 2%. But... We'll see, right? So, anyhow, if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. I guess tomorrow, what are we going to be doing for tomorrow's video? Is it going to be... Which class is it going to be? It's going to be Duelist. And Duelist, the strongest class. Maybe we won't even see any rips, but... Yeah, Duelist should be a pretty fun one to look at. I think not many people actually uploaded their rip clips. But... Be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content and thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time and thanks for and I hope you find more mirrors and exhaust than I do and see you later.